Well, hello there. It's Sunday. Usually I do Sunday morning coffee. It's later in the day. I know, I know. And I was actually going to try to do a live stream, which I don't know if it's going to happen, but in case it doesn't, I am going to record this message. Tis nearing the middle of August, and that means a lot of things. The ending of the summer, if you're in a climate like mine in the Midwest, you really start to cherish those last summer days, even if they're dog days and sweaty hot, unpredictable in the weather area. But also it's back to school. My youngest will be going into high school this year, and then my college kid is heading back. In fact, tonight we're going out to dinner at the Chinese place, our little favorite hole-in-the-wall local place, and having some time. So I might not be able to do live stream. So if this is an audio that I post, now you understand why, right? It's all about balance and priorities. Today I'm going to talk about Sweet Turned Savage. There is a, a song by Caitlin. Look it up, okay? Sweet Turned Savage. So I was thinking, I love this song. I love it. I like a lot of her songs. They're now on my playlist for working out. (laughs) And you'll see why if you listen. But this energy of how, what happens to us inside? What happens to you inside when you've been through something? And all of us have been through some things whether it be a relationship, a breakup, a marriage ending, whether it be a job change, a health crisis, no matter what that is for you, it's a big fucking deal. And many times we are asked to compost over and over and over again these life experiences that are quite frankly extraordinarily difficult Like, we keep getting our asses handed to us at times, right? And it's like, what's the purpose? What's the point? What's the point? And then listening to some spiritual gurus or self-proclaimed teachers on TikTok or YouTube or Facebook, reading some cards and telling you, well, this is what you should do. This is what your life is about. That is just another exercise in giving over your power to somebody else, which results in what? Blame and shame and guilt and more what? What? Trauma, trauma and drama combined. Nobody wants that cocktail, right? We want sobriety from that. We want release and relief. So today, sweet turned savage. I'm going to ask you to deepen into your compassion for yourself. That's a big ask. I know. Especially when you're raging mad, spitting mad at other people so pissed off for whatever they did, whether it be cutting you off in, on the highway or whether it be not giving you a refund for the tennis shoes that you're returning or whatever it is that sets you off, it is just the trigger point. It's, the, it's just the match that lit the kindling. Baby, you're the kindling. Do you hear me? I said it. Baby, you're the kindling. Let's deal with the kindling. The sweetness underneath all that kindling, the mess that created the kindling in the first place, that, that stuff, that is the sweetness. That is the nectar of life. That's when you cut the mango open, you got to wait. You got to wait for it to get ripe and you don't always know if it's ripe. When you're in a situation, you might think it's great at first and then it changes. You know, that new job is great for what, two weeks? Two months, maybe two months, three months. There's like a sweet spot, right? Where it's good, where they don't expect too much of you, but you're getting to know people and they're all kind of on their best companies over behavior. And then pretty soon they start filling in on all the dirt. Then you know way too much about everybody else's business. And you're like, ooh, how much did I actually share of my own stuff? Because you know they're talking about all that now. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming from a person who's recently entered in a new job, actually. It's been like three months, but I like my job. My job's really good. It's very, very part-time. Um, 
Hey, for those of you who don't know, yeah, I have a part-time gig because I need something to kind of supplement my, my income to help kind of give me a stable income because this my psychic work, my coaching work has a lot of ebbs and flows, ups and downs. Like I'll get a bunch of clients and then I won't have any clients for a while, so I need to kind of have something fill in the gaps. And so I got a job as um, a facility supervisor at a community center. So I I put up volleyball nets, take down volleyball nets. I uh, deal with the women's volleyball leagues, which is fun, let me tell you. And badminton and open gym for the kids, the youth open gym, and then family open gyms and all that kind of stuff. And then um, I guess pickleball, too, is going to be a thing, but we don't do that yet because it's not in the winter. They come inside. They're outside right now. So... Yeah, so that's what I do. And I really enjoy I really enjoy the environment. And the other people I work with are pretty pretty dang cool. And we do room setups too, because we rent rooms and stuff out. So, you know, for the Boy Scouts and for the um hockey association and all that kind of stuff, because we're right across from the hockey arena. And so this is probably way too much, more than you wanted to know about my job. But I like it. And I set up tables and chairs and I move shit. And when something's broken, I fix it. And I, yeah, I fix it. Yes, I do. I am like badass now. (laughs) It's a thing. (laughs) So my point is when you start something new, there's kind of this trial period, right? And everybody's trying to put their present their best foot, right? And and everything seems kind of sweet. Like you're like, hey, I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of nervous about this, but you're getting to know things. And just like in a relationship too, it's the same kind of thing. And then eventually, you know, you start to really get to know people. You know what I'm saying? Like you start to see some of the stuff, even though they're trying to hide stuff from you because they still want you to think that they're awesome. You still want, they still want you to think the company's great. We're so great. Meanwhile, everybody's talking talking behind each other's backs and all that. And so (laughs) you know exactly what I mean, right? It's that sweet turned savage. So no wonder why it's hard to trust. No wonder why it's difficult for us to understand what structures we feel we can feel safe in that are here to really support us. And what's not? Well, well, the answer to this that you're looking for and what you're seeking is this truth that you are safe for you. And if you are not safe for you, that's the problem, my friend. That's the issue. Sweet turn savage. All the aspects of who you are must be loved and held into a a core of alignment. That's the code. That's what you're trying to crack. Alignment. Your sweet side, your savage side. Your shadow and your light come together into alignment. And that happens when you are connected to yourself, to your core, and you trust yourself. That's the most important thing. And the truth is most of us don't. And I'm telling you, I don't. I certainly don't. And especially my brain. I don't trust my brain very much because I've made dumbass choices in the last two years, really. And I've had my heart broken and... I've said stupid things and I've done stupid things. And there are things that I'm just like, oh, my God, who the heck? Who's that? That's my savage. (laughs) That's not my sweet. That was my savage. Or that was my sweet coming out to manipulate a situation. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we all have this ability to try to cover up for our downside, try to cover up for our negative traits, try to cover up for where we're not happy and pretend like we're so happy because who wants to be with somebody who's not happy and made lots of mistakes in their past? You got to try to hide that, right? Or you can be like others and just share all that, you know, put it all out there. And if somebody doesn't accept or understand or can't be compassionate, then they're not for you including a job, you know? It's definitely a delicate balance, but what you're seeking is alignment between the sweet and the savage. And I love them both. I got to be honest, I love my sassy, passionate, feisty, savage. But I don't like when I turn into that because I trusted and loved and held with honor someone or a situation or a circumstance, and then it burned me. Then I become savage out of the pain. And that's where a lot of us are right now is like we're trying to, we have misplaced pain. We've been suffering for so long and holding old wounds and re 
harming ourselves, cutting ourselves open over and over again, and we're blaming other people, or we're blaming our past. And the truth is you can't heal in the past. You can only heal in the now, the now moment, the present, here. And you do that through alignment with your sweet and your savage. You do that in alignment with compassionate and trust for you. You are the one you can trust. I'm not saying you can't trust anyone else. I'm saying, yeah, you can't trust anyone else or any circumstance, situation or structure or organization if you can't trust yourself. You have to trust you first. You're going to be skeptical, cynical, watching your back. You are going to be nervous, anxious, and untrustworthy within yourself because you're going to do things to protect yourself that are going to be like overacting, over over responding to something based upon a fear that you're anticipating not being able to trust a circumstance, a situation, or a person. Because why? Because you don't know what trust is because you don't have it inside yourself. The trust comes from you. You share it with other people. You don't give it away. You never lose it. If you lose it fully, you've never had it in the first place. And for me, I struggle with that. I do. I struggle with trust. It's a place I don't know very well. I have, in my life, fiercely been on my own side. Up until a couple of years ago when my life was turned upside down and my whole world, all my values and belief systems, everything I thought I knew about myself totally, completely changed. And in that process, I've had to rebuild my connections one by one with myself. And that means trust. And trust is built over time including trust within yourself. I see a ton of yellow energy. As you know, yellow is solar plexus. It's spirit. It's connected to your intuition. It's honoring the purpose of our lives. It's connecting to that sacred bond of trust. And for me, when I see yellow, I see trust. I also see the honor oil. If you're familiar with oils, the emeraldtempleoils.com, I'm talking about the honor oil there and it's yellow the label is yellow and it smells so magnificent it really brings my masculine and my feminine together and then I instantly see Saint Joan of Arc and the sword so alignment is that sword of truth the alignment is your stability that is the structure you're looking for that is it and that is in you that is your your pranic tube of your spine that is your staff that is you that is you. It's you. Trust what is innately you. And all your pieces and parts, your sweet and your savage, your light and your shadow. Honey, all of it is beautiful. You are perfectly imperfect. You are a manifestation of the divine, of the light, of all things of all wisdom and knowing. Accept this as your reality. It's true. Find your center. Find your alignment. That's the point. That's how you build, rebuild, reconnect the trust within yourself. Thank you so much for listening to this Sunday morning, afternoon, evening podcast. I appreciate you so much here on Above Life channel on YouTube. I will chat with you tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be on time in the morning. We'll see to do a channeling video. If not, don't worry. There are plenty of playlists on Above Life channel that keep you entertained and inspire your spirit and fill you with hope because that's the purpose. To encourage you to live your life. This is your life and nobody else's. Stop trying to live through other people or have them fill your voids. It doesn't work. It does not work. You don't have any voids anyway. So that's why it doesn't work to fill them, my my dear one. (laughs) It doesn't work to fill them. You are whole and complete. You are a child of the universe, a child of the stars. You are whole and you are complete. Oh, so, so beautiful. This is your life now. It's your life. And you get to live it. So just live it. Thanks for listening.